systematic review is like any other piece of research and uh, you wouldn't embark on any other piece of research without planning what you're going to do ahead of time and I think uh, for systematic reviews there are a number of, of key, uh, key things which a protocol will help people do. Uh, firstly it helps them establish the research question and uh, that means setting eligibility criteria and defining the methods and um, also I think it helps with uh, planning the methods and planning the process that they're actually going to have to be working through. Uh, a number of uh, decisions are often made uh, during the implementation of the protocol methods and these are key decisions around what data to use, uh, around sensitivity analyses, around subgroup analysis. And the most important thing to I think bear in mind is that at the start of the whole process you've got to be trying to think ahead of, of, of where you are, trying to think of where you need to get to. And uh, a lot of experience and a lot of research tells us that um, often when people make decisions, what we call post-protocol or once the results are known, um, those decisions are subject to a number of, of biases and if you're not careful you can be led down uh, a path that the data want you to go down but which actually deviates quite a bit from the path that you intended to go on uh, early on. Transparency um, is about being clear from the outset and uh, being, um, having an opportunity to publish uh, your protocol also uh, helps you sort of go through a particular process around peer review uh, because I think you know we're in a, an environment where uh, it's not just a question of planning the methods I also think it's validating those plans uh, against an established uh, set of uh, set of standards which obviously Masir is uh, a key a key part of that. Um, I also uh, think that with publishing protocols, you're, uh, you're making the whole process quite serious. It's, you know, putting a protocol together is, is not an insubstantial task. I think it's quite a, it, it's quite a challenging one. And I, I think um, the peer review process is a, an, an integral part of, of making sure that the, the question, the outcomes that you're looking at, and the methods are pertinent to what you're going to, what you've got to do. So, um, publishing the protocol is also uh, a way of, of trying to um, do two things. It creates a public record of, your, of uh, what your methods were before you knew the data. And um, what that does essentially is it gives somebody else an opportunity to replicate the methods that you then go through according to your own sort of stated prior plans. Uh, and validate your review against, or validate the review against that uh, process. So I, th I think it's it's it is a way of of keeping people a little bit honest about it in, a, in an entirely uh, good way. Uh, in my job, protocols are really important. Um, it's one of the things that we sort of check first when we're when we're looking at a, a review. Is we always ask what did they do in the protocol? What were their stated objectives right at the right at the beginning? Um, and then how did that change? Um, what we try and try and go through is sort of try and put ourselves in the, the shoes of the, the, the original researchers and think, well, would we have made that decision? Is that a reasonable thing to do? Uh, and when those changes are justified, that's, that's great because what that recognises is that there was a protocol, that uh, those intentions were, uh, had to, uh, were changed or the, when they came across data or studies that they felt uh, made them re look again at the question, I think that's an important thing to, to acknowledge. Um, because I think it also acknowledges sort of what happens to the question not, you know, for the next version of the review. So in other words, it's sort of a question of how stable is that protocol over time. Um, and when you make changes to your published protocol, those changes are going to sort of echo through future versions of the review. So it's a really important part, I think, of, of the, the, the Cochrane review process is not just to have a protocol, but to stick to it. And when you can't stick to it, uh, acknowledge that and justify it. In the context of what we do, uh, Cochrane reviews, I think avoiding duplication is uh, one of the, the key uh, sort of principles that Cochrane was um, founded upon. 
And that was really to make sure that people are not doing the same thing uh, in different parts of the world or even down the corridor from each other. Um, and so having a, a published protocol is basically a, 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 pub, a way of, of um, flagging up that a, a review is on, a systematic review is ongoing. It's a bit like um, sort of trial registration now. Um, it's uh, a way of sort of flagging that there is ongoing research in this area, that the question is being addressed in this particular way. And uh, one of the things that sort of that's, that's mirrored trial registration is systematic review registration. And in uh, the Center for Re Reviews and Dissemination in York, there's uh, a database called Prospero, and that's a prospective register of ongoing systematic review protocols. And uh, that's also kind of a key, a key mechanism um, to flag up uh, where there's an ongoing uh, systematic review and Cochrane review protocols are automatically uh, registered on that, on that register or when they're published.